we're going to take a minute to talk about critical values. Uh, critical values are going to be really important as we're making our way through hypothesis testing. Oops. Critical values are essentially the threshold between the values that we're going to consider unusual and those that are more usual. So it's important to realize that a critical value is some point along whichever distribution it is that we're using. So once we realize that, so that's going to tell us how to boil down what calculator function to use in order to find these critical values. We're either going to use the inverse norm function or the inverse t function, depending on which distribution we're on for that particular test. So for tests about proportions, we're always on the normal distribution. For tests about means, where we know the population standard deviation, we're also on the normal distribution. But if we've got a test about a mean where we don't know the population standard deviation, we only know the sample standard deviation, that's when we use the t. So in that case, to use the critical value, or to find the critical value, rather, we would use inverse t. Now, for both of these functions, I have the format right here on the screen. I want to remind you that the format in both, and we'll go ahead and zoom in on the screen to it, the format is that we always input the area to the left of the point we're looking for. Now, for inverse norm, we then want to input the mean and standard deviation. When it comes to inverse t, we input the degrees of freedom. But in both cases, it amounts to finding the area to the left of the point we're looking for. And so when it comes to finding a critical value, my suggestion to you is going to be to draw a picture of what's going on with your test. So as I zoom back out, we have three different situations that are going to arise when we're doing hypothesis testing. We can either have a left-tailed test, which is when your alternative has less than in it. We can have a right-tailed test, which is when your alternative has greater than in it. Or we can have a two-tailed test, which is when your alternative has not equal. So let's go ahead and start with a left-tailed test, and let's look at that. Now, for all these examples here, we're going to assume that your significance is 0 0.05. If your significance is different, you can go ahead and adjust accordingly. But for a left-tailed test, what this is telling us is this tells us, I'm going to exaggerate where this is at just so we can read it better. That tells us that our critical value is the value for which there's 0 0.05 in that left tail, and everything else over here to the right of that critical value is the other 95% of the distribution. But in the critical region there, to the left of our critical value, since this is a left-tailed test, is the significance, which is 0 0.05. So to find that value, that critical value, we're going to use either inverse norm or else inverse t, depending on which distribution we're using. And either way we go about it, the area to the left is 0 0.05. So in general, it's your significance that's going to be to the left on a left-tailed test. Now if we swing over to a right-tailed test, remember a right-tailed test is when your alternative has greater than in it, then your critical value is going to be the point which has your significance to the right of it. So that's your critical region. That's your rejection region, that we're going to reject values that are past there. And so again, that means that in the rest of the distribution, besides that 0 0.05, will be the rest of it, the other 95%. Now remember, the format for typing inverse t or inverse norm is to input the area to the left. So if we were trying to find this critical value, we'd be using inverse norm or else inverse t, depending on which distribution, and in this case, we'd be inputting 0 0.95 as your area to the left. Because again, we had 0 0.05 to the right. We had our significance to the right for this right-tailed test. So the area to the left would have been the 0.95. Now the third case is the two-tailed test. For the two-tailed test, we're going to have two critical values. And the reason behind this is because we have a rejection region in both tails. So we have a critical value there and a critical value there. Now we're going to reject the null any time that our data is in either tail. So if we look at the fact that our significance was 0 0.05, we want 0 0.05 split up evenly between both of these tails. 
That means that I want 2.5% or 0 0.025 over there and 2.5% over there. Now, in our homework, we're typically asked for just the positive critical value when it comes to two-tailed. Realistically, there's two, a positive and a negative. And by symmetry, they have the same absolute value. So if we're being asked, though, for the positive one, we're being asked for the one that's over here that I've kind of highlighted. That's the critical value we're being asked for. If there is 0 0.025 to the right of that value, then we can look at how much is to the left of that value. Well, to the left would just be the complement. It would be 1 minus that or 0 0.975. And so when it comes to trying to find that critical value in the calculator, when it comes to using inverse norm or inverse t, whichever one you happen to use, depending on which distribution you're on, your area to the left that you input is the 0.975. Hopefully that clears up some critical value issues for you.